Hello, and welcome to Hope Collective Church. My name is Vern, and my pronouns are he and him. And this is Less Than Three, a three-minute or less video highlighting different ways we are living out the words, you are loved. Here's what's coming up here at Hope Collective. Step into a neon world of light. Join us for Kids Collective in March as we embark on an exciting journey through the Gospels. Discover how Jesus shines bright in our lives, teaching us to glow with God's light. In this five-week series leading up to Easter, we'll explore Jesus' life, learn to choose Him, and celebrate His resurrection. Let's shine together in the darkness. Join Hope Collective's compassionate team in our mission to serve breakfast at St. Paul United Methodist Church on the first Saturday of every month. We're committed to supporting individuals in our community facing homelessness and food scarcity. If you share our passion for making a difference and want to lend a helping hand, we invite you to be part of our efforts. Contact Addie or Gail to get involved. Together, let's bring hope to those in need through our service and care. Join Hope Collective's H4H Hunger for Hope Food Drive on the first Saturday of each month. Help us refill the blessing box at Have a Gay Day with vital supplies like non-perishable foods, canned chicken, beef, or tuna. Drop your donations in the plastic tub in the neon lobby. Questions? Contact Gail Webb or Dale Bowser. Your participation is vital to our community support mission. March 31st is Easter, and at Hope Collective, we will be worshiping in person at the Neon at 9 a.m. and in person and online at 10.15 a.m. Invite a friend or family member to celebrate with us. We hope to see you there. And that's what's happening here at Hope Collective Church. Hi, friends, and welcome to Hope Collective Church. I'm Andy. I use pronouns he and him. And whether you're a longtime member or this is just your first visit, we are so thrilled to have you with us today. Our tag time together aims to inspire and strengthen our bonds, preparing us for the week ahead. Throughout this service, we will engage in worship, possibly hear an uplifting story, followed by an empowering sermon, partake in communion, which is open to all, and then end in a heartfelt benediction. So let's unite in hope and faith on this spiritual journey here at Hope Collective Church, our mission is to develop inclusive communities where people discover sacred worth and calling. And our four core values are empathy. We see people as people, not as objects, not as obstacles, but as people just like we are. Inclusion. We invite everyone to participate fully in our ministries regardless of the false walls that tend to separate us, including sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender identity, economics, politics, or race. Trust. We are who we say we are. Over time, you'll see that's true. If your trust has been broken by a faith community before, we understand it's okay not to be okay. And humility. We are confident in our calling, but acknowledge that we are just one church among many in which God is using to reach this community. Please let us know that you're here today by giving us a thumbs up or saying hello in the comments section if you haven't already. We encourage everyone to check out our website, hopecollectivechurch.org, where you can register your attendance, submit prayer requests, and make financial contributions. Your ongoing support is greatly appreciated. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, we will be reciting the Apostles' Creed. This is something that we have been doing every Sunday throughout Lent. Reciting the Apostles' Creed might seem confusing when we mention the Holy Catholic Church, especially since we're Methodists. However, Catholic here is referring to the Universal Church, emphasizing our belief in unity and being the church together. And now let's recite the creed together. The words will be on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's worship together, friends. Drink of the water. Come. 
taste of his goodness find what you're looking for My name is Danny Lang and my pronouns are they and them. I identify as genderqueer. I've never felt like my gender conforms to the male or the female gender um, and what we consider gender norms. Um, but if I were to decide on a specific gender, I would feel more male than female. Um, so when I started uh, Hope Collective Church a little over three years ago, I started online and my pronouns were different. I wasn't fully aware of myself. And I know that may not make sense, but I, 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 I just wasn't really fully aware. <clears throat> I was raised in a strict Baptist home. My family attended one of the largest Baptist churches in Dayton. And we were taught you do not um, confuse gender or sexuality by any means. Um, but I was a tomboy. I loved to play with toy cars and going out and getting in the creek beds and playing, you know, kickball with the rest of the boys in the neighborhood. Girly things weren't really, my, I mean, I just wasn't interested. Um, when I was in high school, I would be the one wearing flannel shirts and I would fix boats with my stepdad after school. My body is awkward. I feel like that. Um, what everyone sees on the outside is not how I feel on the inside. And childbearing was probably the most awkward 
uh, especially um, breastfeeding. It was actually almost, um, it, it, it almost uh, made me feel uncomfortable. <clears throat> Uh, and it was very un unnatural feeling. Um, but the, the kid's dad, I had two boys, um, he was pretty much not involved in their lives even when he was there. And then, you know, he stepped out of their lives. So um, I was required to be both mom and dad. And that's why I feel like God made me perfect, you know? <clears throat> So as I navigate the steps of living my authentic self, I feel blessed to have a church family uh, where I can be myself. They accept me for who I am. I feel so blessed that I can come here and share my truth and that I know without a doubt that I am loved. Thank you. You are.
friends, my name is John Morgan and my pronouns are he and him. Welcome to Hope Collective Church. Thanks for finding us online again today. Uh, we're starting Holy Week today with Palm Sunday and of course uh, next Sunday is Easter or Resurrection Sunday. Uh, before we get to today's teaching, I want to share with you about a Tenebrae service taking place this Friday at Englewood United Methodist Church. Tenebrae is the Latin word meaning darkness. Now, traditionally for United Methodists, the story of the suffering and death of Jesus from John's gospel is divided up into separate readings. And after each segment of the story is read, a candle is extinguished or a light is turned off. And after the reading that confirms that Jesus had died on the cross, the last candle is extinguished or, or the light taken away, signifying uh, the death of Jesus and the loss of God's presence. The final story of the burial is, is read in near darkness. And so the worshipers leave in, in, in the dark and in silence and um, anticipate uh, and, and await the celebration of the resurrection on Sunday. So I think it's going to be an extremely meaningful service, and I hope that you can join us again on Friday, 7 p.m. at Englewood United Methodist Church. Well, our Lenten worship series, of course, then is coming to an end. Um, we've been calling the series Depths of Love, and, and we've been examining our own lives and examining the life of Christ and, and simply asking, how can we be more like Christ? And, and how can we experience the depths of God's love? Let's open up our Bibles to the traditional Palm Sunday text found in the book of Mark chapter 11. Now leading up to this uh, text, uh, we see Jesus blessing the children. He has an encounter with a rich man and tells him to sell his possessions and give to the poor. He heals a blind man named Bartimaeus, and for the third time, he predicts his death and resurrection. This is where we pick up in the book of Mark, chapter 11, starting with verse 1. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. Now, did you hear how many disciples that Jesus sent out to do this work? He sent two disciples now, we mentioned this a couple weeks ago when we read about the people from Greece who asked Philip to see Jesus. And what did Philip do right away? He first went and got Andrew, and then the two of them went together to find Jesus. This is how we live out our faith journey. We live it out together in community. Very rarely do we live out our faith on our own. And in today's story, Jesus models this by sending two people together to do this work. Now, do you remember what the two disciples are supposed to do together? They're supposed to steal a colt, or specifically a donkey. Jesus tells them to go steal a donkey together. <laughs> if it were just one disciple that Jesus sent on their own, I could just imagine the internal conversation that would take place. Now, did Jesus really send me to go steal a donkey? Maybe I, maybe I misunderstood what he was telling me. I, I'm not sure if I have the courage to just go and go and steal someone's donkey without asking them. Maybe I should come up with another solution. But with two people, there's a little more clarity and courage. The one could ask the other, did you hear the same instructions that I heard? Are we, are we supposed to steal a donkey for Jesus? <laughs> and maybe the two of them together could encourage one another and support each other in carrying out the work 
that they were called to do. Even, even it was kind of out of the blue and kind of weird, right? Even if it was out of their comfort zone, Jesus sent two of them together for a reason. And of course, we're kind of joking about the scripture a little bit, stealing donkeys. Uh, we don't know all of the details that, uh, and circumstances revolving around this thievery, right? <laughs> but how often do we sense a call from God that's out of the ordinary, or at least out of our comfort zone? I think about the starting of Hope Collective Church, and Elizabeth and I felt and heard uh, the calling at just about the same time. And there was this conversation back and forth. Uh, did we did we hear what we think we heard? Did we hear God uh, calling us to start a new church? Are we sure that this is what we're supposed to do? And of course, we brought others into the conversation almost immediately because we needed more community to pursue this faith journey along with us. This is what I love regarding the theology of the United Methodist Church. We've talked about this several times where we believe that baptism, it's not just between the person being baptized and God, but baptism symbolizes a covenant between the person being baptized and God and the body of believers. We're all in this together. John Wesley, who started the Methodist Church, understood living out faith in community as he connected church folk in groups called societies and classes. And here's what he said. Such a society is no other than a company of persons having the form and seeking the power of godliness, united in order to pray together, to receive the word of exhortation, and to watch over one another in love, that they may help each other to work out their salvation. See, Wesley believed that a life of faith was deeply personal, but never private. Did you hear that? A life of faith is deeply personal, but never private. Believers never walk the journey alone. This was the aim of the early Methodist church, and, and one of the reasons why I love being Methodist is living out our faith together, like Jesus demonstrated quite frequently throughout the gospel stories, and as we just read when he sent the two disciples out together to steal the donkey. <laughs> so here's, here's a little Bible quiz for today. The two disciples went out together. Here's your first choice, A but chickened out and rent, rented a donkey by the hour. B, knocked on the door of the donkey's owner and asked politely to borrow the donkey. C, started the donkey theft operations, but got caught red-handed. Or D, stole a donkey for Jesus and snagged two chickens and a rooster for themselves. Now, I bet a lot of you already know the answer here, but let's continue reading and we'll find out. Verse 4. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? <laughs> they told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. So if you answer letter C, then you are correct. <laughs> in fact, in Luke's account of the same story, it's the owners of the donkey who catch the disciples red-handed in their thievery. <laughs> and they yell out, what are you doing? And the disciples told the owners four simple words, the Lord needs it. And they give up their donkey without hesitation, without knowing how the story is going to play out, with, without having the benefit that we do of not just the death, but of the resurrection of Jesus as well. What a beautiful example when we look at the story of the donkey owners. <laughs> what a beautiful example of what it looks like to loosen our grip. Do you understand what I'm saying? Loosening our grip of the stuff we have for the sake of Jesus. 
In fact, I want to invite all of us right now to just open up our hands as a symbol of not holding on to anything. And I invite all of us to pray together. All that I have and all that I am, I offer to you, Jesus. Let's pray that again. All that I have and all that I am, I offer to you, Jesus. This, this quirky little story is so meaningful in so many ways. Every year, it's such a blessing to read it and hear it from a different perspective. Let's keep on reading. Here, here's where we get to the pomp and circumstance of the story. Verse 7. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Now, do we understand what, what's happening here? Back in the day of Jesus, when a king was going to war, he would ride a horse. When he was proclaiming himself a king of peace, however, he would ride a donkey. So the first thing we need to understand is that Jesus knew what he was doing here. And, and he, he asked to ride a donkey and he got up and he rode the thing into town. Jesus himself is claiming that he is royalty. This is a statement that he's making about himself, that he has authority. He's boldly proclaiming that he is a ruler. Let's continue reading verse 9. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. We see the people waving palm branches and they're calling out Hosanna, which means save us. In those days, the palm branches represented victory and solidarity of the people coming together. Now, to the Roman officials and the religious leaders who were watching this royal parade, the palm branches to them would have been an offensive gesture, <laughs> the kind of gesture that I'm not permitted to interpret in church right now. <laughs> so, you can see what kind of scene is going on here. It's not just a celebration of Jesus, but it's also a statement being made to the government and the religious leaders. They're yelling out that Jesus is king and they're calling him blessed, anointed, chosen by God. We read the story of the palms every year the week before Easter. And it's a great reminder, no matter what your circumstance is in life, to shout your praise. <laughs> Proclaim who Jesus is in your life. Even right now, take time and just acknowledge who Jesus is. Your praise might sound like, Jesus, you are my savior. Or Jesus, you're my healer. Or Jesus, you're my rock or my shelter. Jesus, you're my comfort. Jesus, you're my life. Maybe you have your own praises that you want to share, and you can go ahead and share those in the, the comments. But let's go back to that stolen donkey one more time. Or I guess in this uh, part of the story, we can finally call it a, a borrowed donkey, right? <laughs> Remember, Jesus chose a donkey, which means he's proclaiming himself to be a king of peace. I wonder if people were upset about that statement, or at least confused. You know, as the story plays out, we realize that Jesus wasn't the political savior that people were looking for, but he was the personal savior that they needed, uh, that we all need. And in their minds, victory would mean power and control over the Roman government, but what Jesus was offering was a victory over their own personal sin and over death and ultimately a victory that would give them eternal life. Now, as I often say, we're going to pause right there today, knowing that there's so much more to come this holy week. 
But before we get any further, will you join me in this Palm Sunday prayer as we prepare our hearts for communion? Almighty and everlasting God, we remember the crowds in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed. We know they were looking for a Messiah who was different from who you sent Jesus to be, not one of political power and military might, but one who came in compassion and mercy to heal, love, and save. Search our hearts that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need, Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen and amen. we come to this time of Holy Communion, as always, we want to remind you that you all are welcome to participate. This is an invitation from our all-inclusive God who loves you very much. The words you say will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our joy and our destiny to praise you, Lord God. Your son Jesus faced rejection, cruelty, and even death, yet in resurrection you exalted him, and in sending your spirit you shed glory on all people. And so we rejoice with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, singing the song of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is our cry, blessed one. Your son comes on a donkey in your name, and as Jesus entered Jerusalem to bear our sorrows and suffer for our sins, enter our hearts now and come confront our waywardness today. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who when he was with his disciples, he took the bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you as often as you eat. Remember. When supper was over, he took the cup and again gave thanks and gave to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink, remember. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Humble God, your son did not exploit his status, but emptied himself. Pour out your spirit on all who are exploited in world or church, on all who are humbled by state or employer or family member, on all who are empty of hope, faith, or love. As you highly exalted your son who had become a slave, highly exalt your children who suffer for righteousness, or grieve those they have cherished, or bend the knee to one who does not honor them. Fill the earth with your justice and peace until every heart shall sing and every tongue confess that you are the joy of their desiring, our creator, redeemer, and our sustainer, ever one God, in all ages and forevermore. Amen. Friends, it's the body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat. And the 
the healing cup poured out for you. Take and drink. God, we do give you thanks and praise. We give you all the glory. God, will you continue to remind us of the grace that we have received today so that we can share with the people around. We pray again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, friends. My name is Heather. My pronouns are she and her. As our time together draws to a close, we want to say a big thank you for joining us this week. We really hope you found joy and fulfillment with us. Andy wanted me to remind you that if you are ever in need of a prayer, just email him at ahill at hopecollectivechurch.org or you can message him on Facebook. No matter how big or small your prayer request is, we are always here to pray for you. And now, as we depart this sacred space, may you find strength in the act of letting go and discover the richness of life in the spirit of service. May your journey be guided by compassion and a commitment to the well-being of others. Go with grace, nurturing connections and fostering community as you walk a path of kindness and understanding. Amen. Go in peace, friends, and remember above all else these three important words. You are loved.